What's happening, tennis fans? Rules, right? You gotta have them. We don't always love them, but most of the time we gotta abide by them. But in tennis, if you break the rules, you get a penalty. So let's talk about some of the rules that have been changed, some of the regulations that have been updated, and some suggestions as to maybe what could be implemented on the ATP WTA to make the game more enticing. Now here's, a, there's a bit of a parallel here, right? Because as a tennis purist, that side of me doesn't necessarily agree with the side of me that's what's best for the game. And when we're talking about what's best for the game, we're talking about viewership. We're talking about getting more people into the game and growing the game of tennis. So I'm gonna give you my contrarian view, play a little bit of devil's advocate, but let's start with out of the gates, probably the biggest one, right? The, the storyline of 2021 with Stefano Tsitsipas and his toilet breaks. Excessive, he took a lot of them. And a lot of people were saying that it was unsportsmanlike, that he was doing it to slow down the momentum of his opponent, give himself a breather. Yeah, absolutely. But is it Stefanos' fault? Is he playing within the rules? Absolutely. He, he, he's, well, absolutely it's not his fault. He's playing within the rules. However, is it the best moment, moment at defining his character by, by, by knowing that it's kind of a tick for tack rule yeah, it's probably not, right? So what has the ATP done? Well, they've now limited these restroom breaks to three minutes and you get one after, you can only take it after a set. But here is the thing, is that if you're changing clothes, you can take an additional two minutes. So now it's a five minute break. And five minutes after a set, it, it doesn't seem like a lot of time, but it, it can be. I, I mean, changing clothes I get. I think it's almost reversed if you were to ask me. It's going to take me longer to change out of wet socks wet clothes and everything else than it is to do a number one or a number two. Like, why do you need three minutes to use a bathroom? Changing clothes, I get though. It takes a little bit of time, especially if you've got to change like the taping or whatever else around, you know, your, your ankle, your wrist, whatever it might have you. Uh, but kudos to the ATP finally doing something about this rule because it was really getting ridiculous. Whether you were in the confines of the rule or not, we were all tired of watching you take Restroom breaks, Mr. Sitsi Pass, especially against Murray. Like, dude, fought so hard back to you know to get back from his hip, and then it's like he's standing around getting stiff while this dude blows his blows his nose. But I'm a fan of Stefanos, don't get me wrong. So let's move on. This sets at the French Open. So this is this is a little bit older. So finally, Wimbledon decided, all right, if we get to a fifth set at 12 all, we'll play a, a super tiebreak. And Roland Garris. French Open, we're like, nah, we're good. Like, they're not messing with it. They're, they're just gonna keep the fifth set. Now, we don't see a ton of them, but I, get, I just don't understand it for me per se. I struggle making it through, you know, some of these five setters. And I'm a tennis fan. I, I've, I've, you know, woken up at two o'clock, three o'clock to watch the Australian, whatever it may be. My wife thinks I'm crazy. I teach tennis, I talk tennis, I go home and I watch tennis. But some of these five-hour matches, especially when we get into these fifth sets, we'd see them at Wimbledon or whatever, they just, it's impossible to stay that engaged. We see here, five hours. Five hours is a lot of time to do anything, and I mean anything. So the French Open holding out, I get it, dying on the sword. For me personally, yeah, ad adhere to what everyone else is doing. You know, play to 12, then play a tiebreaker. You're on clay, the game is slow enough as it is. I don't know that we need six hours of tennis, but that would be one that I would personally change. But it's not the end of the world, right? Because we don't see it an absolute ton. So let's move on. This one, right? Maybe not as shocking as, as some of the rules that we've heard recently. Um, Nadal, you know, suggest or whatever else, but we'll get to that in a minute. But deuce, we all know what it means to be in deuce, right? So there are times when deuce games go on forever and the purist in me, I love it, right? Because we're finding whose will is greater, the server or the returner. But there are moments that it, that it, it, it really prolongs a tennis match. So if we're talking about getting more viewers into the market of watching tennis, we got to do away with some of the repetitiveness, right? So I know my, my wife personally, she was watching me play. She was like, I love everything but deuce. Like, it's way more exciting if it's just the next point wins, you know, because I've played both, both, for, both formats. And we see the NCAAs now, you know, at the next point wins on deuce. And we see that professionally on doubles. But this is what I would propose at deuce. Do it kind of like Wimbledon, not when you get to your 12th deuce, but after on your third deuce, 
the next point wins, right? Like draw a line in the sand so we don't have the six add in, add out. And I know the purist in me is like, yeah, but we wouldn't see the Nadal Djokovic eight deuce point add in, add out. It was the pivotal moment of the match. I struggle with that. But I'm just saying, if you wanted to take tennis matches, a two out of three set, if you wanted to take it from two hours down to maybe an hour and 40 minutes, I don't even know if there would be that much of a difference, then maybe we do something about deuce points. Or maybe we just leave it alone because the game's perfect the way it is. I don't know. Playing devil's advocate here, but let's move on. Net cords, right? Let's play them off the serve. That's where I'm at with it. <clears throat> I work with a lot of college athletes, when I go and watch them play, I'm always, I always forget it's a net cord winner off the serve. And a lot of times the opponent does too, right? Now, does the, the net cords take away a lot of time? N no, like it's, it's neither here nor there. We're talking minutes when it happens. I think it would actually make the game more exciting though, right? Like, but the purest side is like, well, the server didn't hit a good serve. Like they just got lucky. It hit the net and it dribbled on over. But isn't that what makes it kind of exciting in the NFL, right? If somebody throws and tips a pass and the, you know, it's intercepted and it's ran all the way back, yeah, that's exciting, right? It was tipped. Or maybe even vice versa, to where the, the QB throws a pass and they tip it accidentally to some other you know, receiver that gets a TD because of a fluke. It's still exciting, right? Whether it's talent or not, it's still exciting. So my vote, play the lets. All right, and finally, what else? Coaching, right? Here we see uh, Naomi Osaka with her former coach, uh, Sasha, being coached between games. Now, th this one, I'm not gonna lie. The purist in me, I don't think it's fair to the players. Like, when we're just talking about ATP because the WTA already has it, but as far as the bringing it on, I, I, and the WTA, no one seems to be upset about it. They, most of the fans are in that side of like, yeah, hey, to coaching's good. But to me, it does someone like a, a Roger Federer or, or, or true thinker in the court, it does them a disservice if somebody brings in coaching, right? Because now it, it becomes more about a team than an individual player. The thinkers on the court kind of lose out on this one. But as a fan, what I would do to hear what Lubacek says to Federer, you know, what is being said to, to Novak, I would love to hear these exchanges, right? What's Stephanos' father saying and what is the fiery exchange that you know a father and son are gonna have? I wanna hear what's being said. I think as a fan, it would be incredible. Think about what it would do for us coaches. What is the mindset of the best players in the world when it matters the most? And if we could hear that through a coach, it'd be awesome. But if I was a player or on the tour, I would not be for it. I'd want my brain, to be my brain versus the opponent's brain and not have a team, a collective team coming out and, uh, and helping with strategy and tactics. So there's a lot of that we've talked about um, and there's a lot that's been in the public. Going back to Nadal, you know, he said that he thought it'd be a good idea if we limited things to one serve. Well, I'm sure you do, Rafa. I love Rafa, but <laughs> say goodbye to Isner, El Pelka and the serve bots. Like you're basically taking them out of the game. The serve is part of the game. And a lot of things have been said about technology, the strings, the polys, the multi-filaments, all these, you know, the string, there's too much technology, the rackets, this, this, this. There's really no going back, right? And I know we can go back to like the, 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 the 60s and 70s and the, the, the purity of the game. And look, the gladiators, it, 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 whatever weapons you can get in their hands, the more entertaining. And, and let's face it, the athletes are getting bigger, stronger, faster. So minimizing what their, their equipment is, I don't know that it necessarily helps the game. Like with some tournaments, like maybe if they started some different tournaments and they were like, no, you have to play with an 85 inch square, a 85 square inch racket, or you have to play with a wood racket. Periodically, like that'd be cool, right? But those would probably turn more into exhibitions and whatnot. So speaking of the exhibitions, formats, let's talk formats for just a minute. So Labor Cup, amazing, right? And, and, and what they've done, we recently had the opportunity to enjoy World Team. I personally am a huge format, or I'm a huge fan of the format with World Team. And then you see a bunch of other things popping up. Um, the, the Ultimate Tennis Showdown that Mortigui, uh, Mortigu, Mortigui? Patrick, help me out, Kenny. Patrick Mortigu, Patrick Mortigu. His incarnation, you know, during COVID, it was so exciting. You know, extra points for aces and this and that. I love it. I mean, that's stuff that's making tennis more watchable, more enjoyable. But as far as the landscape of who we are as tennis players and who the professional tennis players are, 
we still need these two out of threes with traditional scoring, right? Because it's it's the battle of will. It's the battle of athleticism. It's not the battle of shot making in a very short, condensed time. So I don't see that the score is changing much. Maybe we do away with the played out fist set in the French. Um, maybe we do something about deuce, but the duration of the game, I would not touch. But that is just my opinion on a lot of different things. And I, I'm, I'm not giving you, like I said, I'm giving you both point of view. I'm, I'm personally torn. What I think is better for the viewer is not better for the purest of the game, but it's worth a discussion. So speaking of discussion down in the comments, let me know what you think. Tell me, no, tell me what you think would improve, what you think would, would hurt. Tell me what you agree with, what you disagree with, all that good stuff. And as always, thank you for watching. You know what to do, hit that like, sub, share. And in the comments, we left you a free link to the Player Court platform to meet players in your area for practice or match play or to argue about what rule change needs to be implemented or done away with. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.